Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here checking out the electric Fat Tad from Electric Bike Technologies. It's a really cool bike. This is a 2019 model year, and they've got a couple of cool updates with it, but it's just a very unique vehicle overall, something very different from a lot that's covered on electric bike review. So let's go ahead and jump in because I want to show you all about it. So as you can see, this is not a bicycle. <laughs> so it's not exactly an electric bike review. This is getting into electric trike review uh, based on the three wheels. Uh, so this is a Tadpole electric trike. Uh, that's a designation for a trike that has two wheels in the front of the vehicle and one wheel in the back. So this is a Tadpole trike, an electric uh, dual suspension Tadpole trike. <laughs> and that's a lot to, uh, a lot to consider. Uh, so this bike, of course, or this, I'm going to call it a bike uh, just out of habit, but this trike is meant for someone who wants to kind of lay back. Uh, as you can see in the seating position, you kind of put your legs forward. So it's really low impact on the joints. It's easy to get in and out of. It's very approachable is like definitely the way to go. And also the balance is, well, the balance is really not an issue. You can totally balance on this thing. As you can see, there's no kickstand. So when you're riding it, you don't have to worry about any of that. So for someone who has like some physical considerations, then this is an excellent vehicle choice to get out and still pedal and still more or less use it as a, as a bicycle, despite the fact that it's got three wheels. Uh, so there are some considerations when you're putting this inside and out of your garage, you know, some space things, or if you wanted to take it inside of a store, it's kind of a wide uh, vehicle. So there are some practicality issues there. And those are trade-offs that are more or less a part of a trike in the first place. It's not really particular to this vehicle. But anyways, I'm kind of getting a little bit distant. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the specs on the electric Fat Tad, and we will jump in. So, um, it's it's pretty unique you know a lot of times i start at the front of the bike and kind of work my way back uh, on this one i'm just going to have to uh, jump around a little, a little bit uh, so this one does have uh, brakes up in the front uh, of the bike and it does not have brakes in the rear and since the front of a vehicle is usually the brakes that do most of the work and especially on a trike the back wheel is just kind of like kind of coasting a little bit uh, so don't be alarmed by that this one has uh, some mechanical disc brakes in the front and the rear so so these brake rotors are 160 millimeters and the brake calipers are a dual piston uh, Pro Max 300 uh, and that's of course a mechanical disc brake. So you have like a cable that's kind of coming through here and then when you squeeze on the handlebar or when you squeeze on the brake lever, which by the way, there's like a four finger uh, lever with a brake cutoff switch or motor inhibitor as it's sometimes called. Uh, when you squeeze on that, the cable kind of contracts and that brings the little pads together to squeeze onto the, the rotor uh, that's kind of spinning through. Uh, so that's what a brake rotor does, in case you didn't know. And this system is pretty good because it has a brake on both sides. And when you squeeze on the right hand side, you're squeezing on the right hand brake, likewise with the left side. So it's pretty intuitive. You know, if you want to kind of brake as a method of turning the trike, uh, it's a little bit advanced. I don't do a whole lot of drifting, but if that's up your alley, then you can totally kind of customize it in that way. Uh, so it's a pretty neat system on the brakes alone. Um, this is using a Chow Yang uh, fat tire. So this is like a two, um, sorry, a 20 um, inch wheel. Uh, by a four inch wide tire and that's a lot to stuff into here and it's pretty knobby so you kind of get this go anywhere sort of feeling uh, with these fat tires because you can uh, go in a lot of different places we're out here on the gravel area to sort of illustrate a little bit of that um, but between the surface area of the four inch wide tires multiplied by the three uh, wheels that you have this thing really has a lot of traction uh, anywhere you go and of course you're not worried about tipping over because you're in a trike uh, so it's pretty good uh, and you'll kind of see a little bit of that when we get into the riding portion because it's a lot of fun. Uh, so of course these have the punch outs within the wheels. These are a double wall uh, aluminum wheel in here. And this is coming into kind of the uh, the peculiarities of it because the wheel is not wheel tire and brake. That's not altogether uh, unsimilar. But so this is part of the suspension system. They say it's a 40 millimeter travel of suspension. And of course that's a lot to compact in here. Uh, but you have kind of like a coilover system in here that sort of equates to a larger kind of uh, suspension feeling. So uh, one thing to note about the suspension system is that it's not intended to give you a uh, like um, 
kind of like a dual suspension off-road you know rock hopper kind of a thing the suspension is mostly utilized in turning and maybe like some small bumps so it kind of eases things up for comfort kind of gives you a little more stability for turning um, but it's not like open access to a lot of downhill trails so <laughs> it does have a dual suspension or i guess a triple suspension in a way um, because you have it on both ends of the bike left to right and you have the two on the front and the one on the back um, so it's good it works out really well for that purpose but coming back to the bicycle again uh in here you have a sealed cage bearing for I, it's a headset you got a headset on one side and a headset on the other and that's coming straight up into the handlebars so you don't really have a stem in this case it just goes right into the handlebars and these ones kind of come up and then they kind of you know bend down just a little bit i guess you'd technically call that a dropper bar because <laughs> it drops like a, i don't know half an inch or so on either side and they do that to give you a really easy uh, riding position with your hands so you, it really just meets your hands right there we kind of measure the reach in a lot of bicycles that we review where we measure how far it is from the seat up to the handlebar area in this case it's like eight inches <laughs> just uh, laterally uh, so it's very very comfortable easy to get your hands in and out of there it's just a dream to ride uh, so it doesn't give you the same kind of like i touched on before it doesn't give you the same kind of impact on your body that a bicycle would where you're leaning forward you got your weight on your hands or anything this one's very easy going easy on the joints is kind of what they're going for uh, so to continue on with some of the mechanical features uh, so this bike does have a sram grip shift 3.0 on it uh, on both sides so it does have a front and a rear set of gears uh, so this one of course is for the rear you got eight speeds that's coming back into this uh, cassette right back here it's a pretty good set you got kind of like this chrome plated sort of feel for the 11 to 34 uh set of gears on here of course that's 11 teeth on the bottom coming back up to 34 uh on the top and this is your derailleur uh this is your sram x4 derailleur that kind of goes up to the front controls that we talked about the chain extends all the way through the length of this trike uh which by the way the total length of this trike is adjustable so on the bottom end it's about 77 uh and a quarter inches long and if you extend out the front chain ring, that adds another six inches or so. And I'll kind of get to that in a second, uh, following the chain. Uh, so the chain kind of comes up here, goes into this cross section uh, that has kind of like these little dummy wheels that kind of keep it aligned. And these also articulate with the shifter. So you're not going to be misaligned there. And then it comes up through here. They kind of have this tubing to keep it nice and pretty. So you're not scuffing up your pants or anything as it comes through. And then up to the derailleur up here. And as you can see, this is a three-speed uh, derailleur with its own set of gears up here. So you got 22 teeth on the bottom end, up to 32 and then 42 uh, on the top. Uh, so this is part of the what they call the boom assembly. Um, so this is where your feet go, obviously. Uh, these are the 170 millimeter uh, cranks so onto the plastic Welgo pedals. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about was the length of the total bicycle is adjustable on this axis. So instead of raising the seat, uh, the seat is adjustable. We'll get to that in a sec. Okay. So the primary mode of customizing this for a rider is to either shorten or lengthen the amount of this tube that telescopes inside of here. And of course they have these little stays right there to keep it in place. Uh, so for myself, this has been adjusted to me specifically. Uh, and that's a, something that I did want to mention is that this bike does come from the factory, uh, from Electric Bike Technologies, fully set up for the rider. You tell them the measurements that you need and they will actually customize it put it in the box and send it out to you fully loaded the way that it's supposed to go uh, so if you want to adjust it say if you're sharing the bike with like kids or a spouse or something you can um, but from the get-go they set it up exactly for you which is pretty cool and they got this one set up for me so I'm happy so on this boom area of course this is where you have what is usually called the bottom bracket but it's up in the front of the bike uh, along with this little extension right here to accommodate both the shifter for the front derailleur uh, as well as a little reflector up on the front and so yeah this is the boom if you wanted to you could also um, kind of shorten this up if you had to fit it inside of a truck for long-term travel uh, but there is kind of a process to it you have to undo these two bolts here and then you got to press it in and depending on how invested you are in the length you may or may not have to change the chain um, if you wanted to go from one extreme to the other uh, but in most cases you probably just leave it set up in one way and then just extend or shorten this little guide for kind of like a smaller fine-tuning uh, kind of a purpose 
And of course you have the eight magnet pedal assist uh, system up in here. So this is a cadence based system that's reading how many uh, rotations the cranks do. And it picks up uh, right there. Um, this bike does have a good pedal assist as well as a throttle uh, for powering the electric system. Um, let's talk about the seat really quick. Um, we'll get through a little bit more of the mechanical system and then we'll jump into the electric. Uh, so with the seat, uh, it is adjustable, but there's just a couple of basic adjustments you can do on it. Uh, down here underneath the seat, you'll see that it has this bracket based on a bolt and a pin. You can change it between three different positions uh, right there. And that's the main adjustment if you want to uh, put the seat closer or further away from, from the boom. As well in the back here, you have this brace that's holding up the back of the seat. This brace, as you can see, is also adjustable. Uh, you kind of pull out these pins here, extend and telescope up the back of the seat if you wanted to heighten it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Because the seat, like I said, is fairly static, uh, but the boom is where you get a lot of your person personal adjustment uh, for moving the bike. Uh, so kind of unique to this that is not part of most bicycles is the steering linkage. Uh, so you have just a crossbar that's going all across the entirety of the wheel set. And then it comes into kind of like this little um, kingpin uh, right in here, if you want to call it that, that's supporting the brake mount uh, as well as the mount for the hub. Uh, so this linkage system comes in here and then it extends all the way across the bike. So they do that because you can still turn with one hand. Uh, as you can see, you can turn with just the one left hand here and the right wheel follows alongside with it. Uh, so that way, if you just want to steer with one hand or perhaps again, you have some uh, an amputee riding this or something, you can totally uh, get access to it. Uh, the brakes, you probably want to have customized a little bit, but nonetheless, it's pretty approachable for whatever kind of physical considerations you might have, uh, which is really good. Uh, so a couple of last things about it. It does have the rack on here. This is an optional rack that we'll kind of talk about with the rest of the electric system. Um, but let's touch on the rear suspension here. This again is a coil over shock that is mostly, like I said before, kind of to soften the ride. Um, I don't know if I'd put too much stock in taking this on a huge hill. Um, but again, a large part of that is due to the total weight of this vehicle uh, at all. So this bike is coming in just under 90 pounds, uh, the way that it stands. All right, so one of the additions that they've done for the new model year for 2019 is that they've changed the placement of the display. Uh, so the display uh, is right there on the left-hand side. You could totally put it on the right-hand side if you want, if you had to or wanted to. Uh, but in the past, they had it mounted like straight in the center here. It actually got kind of hit by someone's thighs as they were pedaling, or perhaps they'd kind of knock it off as they were uh, lifting up their leg to kind of come over the uh, the boom there. Uh, so they found that this was a much better position to put it in. And that's uh, one thing that you can enjoy from this company <laughs> is that the, these guys are based here in Philadelphia where they do not only the customization, but they also build these bikes uh, from a frame and a box full of parts. Uh, so it's American made, uh, which is great. Uh, so this electric system is pretty simple to use. You can press the power button right there and then it starts up, it shows you your speed uh, right there in the center, how fast you're going, um, and also the assist level. Right now we're in level five and you can customize that just by pressing the up or down arrows on the fly. You don't have to stop the bike or anything like that. It just works all the time. Uh, you have your speed, how fast you're going, your pedal assist and your total odometer, and that will rotate as you press this button just lightly. That will go between a trip set, a second trip set, your max speed, average speed. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, your battery level is actually shown on kind of like this ruler motif where it has tall lines and then some smaller lines in between the larger uh, kind of rows there or columns. Um, so this is telling you how much battery power you have. Right now we're fully charged, so we're ready to rock. And as you can imagine, this is quite customizable and adjustable um, in a large degree. They kind of have it set here, but you can adjust the height of it, the tilt, you know, kind of the angle, if you wanted to kind of point, you know, lean over towards you a little bit. And of course the total height of where it stands on the handlebar. And if you wanted to, like I said, you could switch it over to the right-hand side if that works better for you. Uh, so this does have a motor inhibitor, uh, meaning that when you squeeze on the brakes, that has an extra electric cable that goes down to the controller and turns off the motor. So anytime you're pressing on the brakes, no matter what you're doing, there is a cutoff signal to allow the motor not to go. And what that does, it prevents you from fighting against the motor. If you squeeze on this, but you're still pedaling, you know, it's not going to throw an error and fling you off the bike or anything. It's a safety mechanism to kind of keep you grounded. Uh, this, I kind of mentioned the pedal assist in which you pedal the bike on the cadence based system and that's what moves the bike forward. Or you can use the throttle. 
So this has a thumb throttle, uh, which is right here. When you press down on that, usually with your thumb, then that will expressly engage the motor. So anytime you press down on that little tab, the motor will kick in. So this is a 500 watt nominal uh, geared motor that you have in the rear hub. And this is what's powering uh, the bicycle. Uh, well, at least that's what's powering it electrically. Of course, you can help out with the pedals. Uh, but this is a pretty good motor selection um, because you can use a throttle if you need to get yourself out of a sticky situation. For a vehicle like this, this is meant for someone that has physical considerations. So if you're feeling faint or if you've just kind of lost energy or if you have challenged yourself enough and it's time to go home, the presence of a throttle really opens this up to all sorts of different customers, all sorts of different riders that otherwise wouldn't be out. So yeah, we covered the electric system, the pedal assist, the throttle. I mean, the only other thing to kind of talk about is there are some very simple connections. Uh, these are waterproof connections that go into the controller back here. So the controller is an air-cooled controller here behind the driver. And this is pretty good because if for some reason you needed to switch this out, you can always call the guys at Pennsylvania and it's pretty easy to access, which both of those are very good points. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump on the trike and take it for a ride. So easy going. <laughs> so easy going so yeah that's definitely one thing i would uh i'd stress about the uh the utility of this vehicle or the purpose is that it's really like easy and i don't mean easy in the sense of like oh the motor does the work for me because you know those there's lots of bikes like that but it's just really easy you feel like you're in an easy chair like a recliner just kind of sitting back and relaxing uh and still getting out to see a lot of stuff so um Right now I've got it in pedal assist, but the throttle is always active. It's called a throttle override in which you can just be pedaling and then anytime you hit the throttle, it will override the pedal assist and keep going. Uh, so I like that a lot uh, because it makes for really easy riding. <laughs> really easy because anytime you need it, boom, just hit on that throttle. And I mean, I kind of want you to kind of take a look at how easy it is to steer this thing. I'm holding the camera with one hand like I usually do. And sometimes that leads me into some hairy situations, but I don't even need to use my other hand. I really don't. I could just kind of pedal along, kind of steer easy with just one hand if I need to steer easy. I mean, yeah, it's great. The brakes are, like I said, like they are kind of one-sided. So um, if you are holding a camera like me, then you'll want to brake a little bit gingerly uh, because you only have one side of the brake, uh, which at the moment is my left hand uh, is available uh, for that. Uh, but yeah. The steering is pretty good because when you take, like I said before, when you kind of take a sharp turn on it, that suspension collapses a little bit um, on the inside of the turn, uh, which is good. If it didn't have that, I mean, it'd still be usable, but if it didn't have that, you wouldn't be able to go quite as fast on a turn and it would, it would kind of launch, well, not really launch, that sounds scary, but <laughs> it would kind of, uh, it would allow the outside wheel to lift up a little bit more uh if you did that if you took a tight turn without suspension so the suspension definitely helps uh, as far as like you know off-road i mean i can do a little bit here kind of go over this little bump here boom, boom yeah i mean it does the rear suspension helps out on some of the smaller bumps because right now i'm kind of going through a kind of a grassy uh, bumpy area and the suspension's great it really does a good job here um i like that uh, i like it quite a bit so it definitely has this kind of like do anything sort of feel because i mean if you take a look at the terrain let's just go ahead and jump around a little bit okay it definitely has this kind of do anything sort of feel uh so let's go ahead and jump around in the terrain a little bit i'll turn the camera around you can kind of see a little bit of where we're going <laughs> we're taking some pretty good turns in the gravel here and in this bumpy grassy area i think whoa there's <laughs> there's some hidden um, ballasts for uh, boats, for boat parking uh, that we're kind of rolling over a little bit. Get the little adventures. I don't have fenders, so I want to avoid the water if I can. Let's see. Let's kind of come over here in this gravel area. Take a tight turn. <laughs> Let me show you one more thing uh, while we're at it. Uh, I want to show you the suspension collapsing. So. I'm going to come up here a little bit. Let's kind of speed up. I'm going to go up to this turn. I'm going to make a sharp left turn. I'm going to put the camera down on the left suspension. Um, and you'll kind of see it collapse a little bit or depress as we make that turn. Here we go. Okay. 
Okay, so that was like a sharp right turn. Uh, the, the path was a left turn, <laughs> but I made a right on it. Um, and yeah, you got to see that kind of depress. All right, let's go ahead and attach it to part of the motor and we'll take a look at that. All right, so here we are checking out the back end of the bike as we do the ride test. Uh, one thing I wanted to show was the charger. Uh, so the charger has kind of like this plastic case to it. Uh, pretty simple, you know, it's got the uh, pretty simple plug to it. So there's not a whole lot to goof up there. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a spin on the bike. So we got up to uh, 20 miles an hour on that. It was a, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm glad you got to see the uh, compression a little bit uh, on the suspension there when we kind of went over a little bit of a bumpy spot. So yeah, pretty good stuff. Okay, one last thing that I forgot to mention was actually the battery. You know, that's a pretty important thing. <laughs> so the battery pack uh, as it stands on this one is the mid-range as far as price is concerned. Uh, so this one has the metal rack. Uh, that comes with these, this battery. It's a two-tiered rack that has uh, this plug to get the battery out, as well as this unique key. You use that to uh, allow the battery to kind of come off of its rail. And so, here we go, let's go ahead and stabilize it a little bit. Okay, and there is the battery. This, of course, is from Electric Bike Technology, so it's branded as e-bike kit, which is one of their sister brands uh, that they have in-house. Uh, so that's the rack that holds the battery in place. If you want to save a little bit of money, you can actually get a slightly smaller battery, which is a 48 volt, uh, nine amp hour battery. And it fits into this bag right here. So that's where the cost savings comes in. You get a rack that it goes on, which is in the same place, but the rack looks a little bit different. Uh, so it would mount on here, something like that. And there's also a third option. If you wanted to get the price up a little bit more, there's the same bag, but it's a 20 amp hour battery which is like double the capacity of the 4810 uh, that I've been riding with that metal case. There is a compromise because you get the larger battery, but it's in one of those bags. So, you know, it's up to you. If you want kind of like the fit and finish of getting a battery that's inside the metal rack and it's nice and protected, looks pretty sweet, you know, locks into position. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of compelling reasons there. Uh, but if you wanted to go really, really far, then yeah, you get the one in the bag, or if you want to save some bucks, you can get the small one in the bag. So yeah, there's some options there for you, but anyways, Thanks for checking out the review of this recumbent electric trike, the Fat Tad. Uh, it's been really fun to ride. Uh, it's a very unique vehicle, and I'm glad that we got to check it out and show you guys on electricbikereview.com. Which, speaking of, that's the website that you'll want to go to if you want to check out the full write-up uh, on this trike, as well as all the measurements and specifications that we do on site here. Uh, you can also go to that website if you want to participate in the forums and if you want to ask a question kind of like be a part of the community uh, things like that so thanks for watching guys ride safe <laughs>